everybody, so Butternut Twig and I'm Arndt. Welcome back to Tokyo Babble. Now, in the last video, it was an extra long video, which I kind of went over my recording time. I wasn't paying attention to the clock, and I um, didn't get enough sleep. So I'm running at about three, five hours of sleep, honestly. Anyway, let us jump right back in, and hopefully I don't screw up this time. Back home, we were greeted by the head angel Camiel, as well as the demon lord Beliel. Fat beads of sweat trickled down Camiel's temple, while Beliel, for some reason, was holding a pair of chopsticks in a rice bowl. Oddly specific. およ、どうしたの? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have ever heard a demon just, or besides this guy, I think I've ever heard a demon lord just say, dude. <laughs> Nah, Adam and Eve are kind of dicks, so... Belial eyeballed me curiously. I thought my expression was natural, so his words left me somewhat surprised. Camiel made no effort to hide his surprise. Belial spoke up in his stead, still in the middle of wolfing down his rice. Solomijan, would you like? Oh, I'm, I'm thinking maybe you should like just try to ask them to train you or something. After some hesitation, I ended up choosing Belial. Oh. Am I fucking psychic or am I just? Or is this easy to predict? I promptly bowed my head. Oh, Hey, don't you dare insult Uncle Iroh's jasmine tea. Despite his grumbling, Belial glugged his jasmine tea down in one go once he was done with the food. Sorry, wasn't actually as surprised by that piece of information as I thought she would be. I appreciate it. Sarmi flashed a dazzling smile. I very much appreciated her concern. Arigato. Her consideration. Damn it. Lila shot a suspicious glance our way. <laughs> you jealous? Belial and Camille both nodded at Lila's observation while Sarmi herself flushed bright red. Nothing wrong with being a little nice. I responded honestly. Sarmi began nervously fidgeting in place. You okay there, Razi? <laughs> Is she asleep again? 
both poked Raziel on the side, forcing the angel to slightly jolt up. Well, what else would you do in the library? Raziel stormed off at a brisk pace, her shoulder bumping into mine as she passed me. Uh, dude, I know you're clueless, but please tell me you're not that clueless. She cast a cursory glance at me, one ripe with contempt, before silently leaving. <laughs> Lilith looked like she had already known this would happen. But please don't. Professor Harlequin? Who? Tendo Setsna. Stite or Shindaro? Dottara, Yogoretemoe, Funi Tigaite, Sodana. Scogoni Taikanigoe. Soremadini, Kizua Zembu Naustoke. Oh, goody. I'm kind of curious to see what your powers are, Belio. Two days later. Oh, for a second there, I thought it just did a time scale. I'm like, okay, what the fuck? Belial grumbled something under his breath before simply vanishing from sight. Must have used some fo form of fast travel magic. Okay. Okay. I don't wanna. Sleep in the closet. I feel like that's a reference to something. <laughs> Lilith giggled to herself. After having decided not to raise any particular objections, staying still would hasten my recovery after all, I headed back to our room with Sorumi. Tendao Satsuna and Kugutsu Sorumi left, leaving only Lilith and Kamiel in the hallway. <laughs> Yeah, they're kind of being heartless assholes. Camille did not take kindly to Lilith's tone. Adam is a human being. If he is a human being, he Fuck you, he's not human. Lilith's lips curled into a bitter smile. He's a copy of the He's a human, then I'm a goddamn demon. So, what does she need? Agreed. Camille's eyes widened. For a few moments, neither of them uttered a single word. Lilith absent mindedly gazed into the distance, the same direction Setsuna had left in moments before. The angel then mustered the courage to go on, even though his expression reflected his discomfort. Camille's expression turned bitter at the sight of Lilith's positively devilish grin. あの天道説なの正体について騒ぎ始めている。うん。あの男はこれから先も巡礼を続けられる数少ない人間かもしれない。だからできるだけ知っておきたいんだ。そうすれば。そうすれば彼のフォローができるかも。そうだ。The angel nodded. Lilith despite having exhaled a weary sigh was beaming from ear to ear. 前から思っていたんだけどね。構える。なんだ。なんだ。
実はいいやつすぎるだろねっ知らん<笑> Camille averted his gaze cheeks turning as red as the clothes he was wearing Lilith hesitated for a moment but ultimately figured Setsuna would care little for his past being exposed Revealing his true nature would be another matter though Sorami might accept it without difficulty but for Raziel it could come as quite a shock I'm 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 a shock I figured as much. Camille gave an acceptant nod as Lilith went on, her expression growing darker. Babel? Babel? The Tower of Babel had been erected by people who challenged and vowed vengeance against God. So he's the embodiment that's supposed to be embodied. Okay, this is going to sound weird, but from what I'm getting, he's the embodiment of the rebellion of God. Or the act of rebelling God. Like, he's the embodiment of it. Am I right? So basically, could that be considered that he's the polar opposite of Adam? And with that as her introduction, Lilith began to reveal Tendao sets in his past. Which we won't see. I felt a spell of dizziness come over me as we stepped into the night duty room. The great amount of blood I had lost may have been the culprit. Either way, I needed to regenerate it. Listen, I literally want you to get me 18 large pizzas. Wait, what? 18 large pizzas, damn it. I was lacking in energy even after consuming all my nutrients. Either way, dinner time approached. The occasion would surely serve as the perfect opportunity to replenish my reserves. Or you know, smack me in the head with the frying pan. Having said that, I entered the closet spread out a futon and wrapped myself in it. I temporarily shut down my senses, sight, hearing, smell, and taste, all except for my sense of touch. Did people refer to this as sleep? I closed my eyes and ordered all the nanomachines coursing in my bloodstream to begin healing my wounds. Sarmi so stood in the kitchen, losing herself in silent contemplation. Setsuna appeared to have gone to sleep. The way he looked in, in the closet, eyes closed and all, was definitely sleeping, even if he himself would disagree with that assessment. Sarami let out a sigh. The kitchen was ill-equipped. No, no, no other way to put it. Far be it from Sarmi to complain, but she would have at least preferred a kitchen of suitable for cooking a proper meal. Sarami certainly needed the ingredients, but remained clueless as to where she should go to get, to get them. The very moment Sarami resigned herself to that fate, the room's door flung open with impeccable timing. Oh, hi, Astaroth. And in stepped a man wearing a black and white suit, an air of elegance and eccentricity lingering about him. Sarami froze in place, almost like on command. She knew very well she was standing before one of Pandora's most influential people, or rather, demons. Sarami had already met him around the time Lilith dragged her around all the classrooms of Pandora. Raziel's uh, in the library, Lilith's talking to Camiel, and... Sets in a sleeping. Sets in it was here, technically speaking, only locked up in the closet and in deep sleep. He'd only just gone to bed recently, so maybe waking him would not be a good idea. And then Sormi realized something. Astaroth was one of the most powerful people at the academy, someone who even played a part in its establishment. In other words, he knew this place better than anyone, which meant. Sorry, 
きな方で構わんよさてどうしたのかな I don't know what it is the, with the contrasting of his outfit. Like, I don't know. I like the design. The moment the words left Sarumi's lips, Astaroth flashed a devilish smile. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Kono mao a s t a r o t h ni o n e g a i t o a Mochiro dekiru k o t o n a r a n a n d e m o k a n a i t e a g e r u t o m o n e g a i no o k i s a n i y o t e w a Kimi no daiji na nani kato. Da ga. Sarumi decided to just go ahead and blurt it out. <laughs> Astaroth was genuinely thankful for the fact that none of his underlings were present to witness him like this. The millennia old demon lord found himself at a complete and utter loss, possibly for the first time in his eon spanning lifetime. Raziel failed to muster up the motivation to work. Unable to find a book to read, her fingers reached for volume after volume, then pushed them back immediately. The more precise expression would have been that she was unable to find a book she had wished to read right now. She was browsing her favorite section, history. On any other day, she would have been able to easily find a book, almost like the things were calling to her. But today, all the volumes appeared to be rejecting her. Naturally, the books themselves possessed no will of their own, but rather, The problem lay with Raziel herself. That something within her was whispering into her ear, telling her to read another book today. She let the words slip out. The Dentalian stared at her, both of them frowning. Christ. One of the many Dentalians went on in a low tone. I'd probably go with law. Literature, preferably. preferably. All of the above. So you know, to a Amari Kanke Naito Mo Kazai Kanke Ariva Kanak Technology. All subjects I failed in high school. Sports, Kaktogi, Bujuts. I'm very unhealthy. Kyoik Kanke Chinaga Jitsuogo. I already read all the For Idiots books. Raziel firmly shook her head. I can cook, I can make a pillow, and that's about it. Well, besides make a, I mean, besides a pillow, I can sew a little bit. That finally listed some sort of response from Raziel, to which the Dantalians approvingly all pointed in the same direction. Raziel took to the air, a faint smile dancing on her lips as the Dentalians began whispering among themselves. Cooking is actually kind of fun. So, there are. 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 The Dentalians each turned their attentions to organizing the archives. Raziel wondered why they thought it so strange that she would harbor an interest in cooking. Was it truly that odd? Maybe it was. The thought filled Raziel with a bit of sadness. Well, there's nothing wrong with wanting to cook. As Raziel arrived at the designated area, she quickly let her gaze rush from A to J, spying a number of books of Japanese characters on their spines. One particular volume had touched something in her heart. Yes, What, something about angel hair pasta? 
She pulled the book out titled, Flavorful Japanese Recipes, and promptly set to reading it. The book was quite generous with its pictures, so it took Razio less than three seconds to finish. However, her confusion had precious little to do with the book's content itself. Instead, she had difficulty understanding her own motivation for wanting to read a book like this. Raziel was at a complete loss. She recalled the palpable irritation she felt upon hearing Sordomi propose the idea of a boxed lunch. Discomfort may have been too strong of a word. Even slight irritation could describe it better. Raziel was an angel, and therefore had no experience with cooking. Never once during the several thousands of years of her life did that fact ever bother her. In fact, angels could go 500 years without having to eat a single thing. In heaven, angels could drink soma and have their sense of hunger completely vanish. As such, Raziel herself had barely ever eaten any normal kinds of food. Until she came to Tokyo Babel, that is. Humans possess appetite for food. When such a trade escalates out of control, it becomes greed, one of the deadly sins. As such, Raziel had never once cared for even the concept of cooking. Until now. However, as Lilith, a demon who cherished such cravings and held the lust for food in high regard, and Sormi began to cook, Raziel gradually changed her mind. Lilith's culinary skills were more or less on the same level as Raziel's, though, and she was adamant in her belief that instant ramen counted as cooking. The desire to eat delicious cooking, in other words, having an appetite, a craving for food, wanting someone else to taste one's cooking, though, could such a thing be classified as a craving? Well, you're craving the satisfaction, I guess. To have, someone's ta to have someone taste one's cooking, then go on to compliment it, was that a right thing to want? Razel did not know, yet still she wanted it. She wanted to cook for someone, but for whom? <laughs> the Dentalians were not here to provide her with an answer. She wasn't certain if they even could. There were only a handful of human candidates she could think of. No, not her, and certainly not Lilith, either, which left only one other person. You love him. All these thoughts consumed Raziel to the point of even losing track of the passing of time. Yeah, not like we were around to listen to it. Camille's expression soured. Jesus。ただそうあるように生み出されただけよ。Camille nodded. If he were a demon, Lilith would have had to think of drafting up a contract, but eventually concluded that, considering Camille's straight-laced nature, no such thing would be necessary here. She could probably even trust him to take her side in case Setsuna's identity got uncovered by others. それじゃ、私は帰るわ。あ、大層階層に潜んでいる支配者は残り2人のどちらかなのよね。ああ、日の上渡るか。押し場鋼のどちらかな。そして第5階層彼は全人未到と。天国への階段があるさ。あなたは
She loved the persistently sweet flavor of the beverage despite its low sugar nature. Camille ignored the demon's cheeky follow-up. He exhaled, letting a long trail of white smoke drift sluggishly towards the skies. After a brief period of silence, Camille once again spoke up. The angel's words carried an inexplicable quality of sadness to them. ただちょっとつ盲信と同義になりそうなのは困るわ。それはまあ確かに。だが、第五階層から上は前人未到だ。せめて行方不明になっているメッセンジャーさえ発見できればな。メッセンジャー。どこにいるのよ、あいつは。わからん。東京バベルの第五階層にいるとも、虚数の世界に綾部屋なまま存在するとも、この学園にひっそり隠れ住んでいるとも言われている。うん。メッセンジャーって確か兵所愛好家じ
Those who remained had lost their way, left with nothing but faint glimpses of hope and certain doom flickering in the darkness of uncertainty. All the while fumbling for leads, believing in themselves, yet ever wrestling with the fear that only an empty void would await them at their journey's end. They had no choice but to press onward, one step at a time, not entirely unlike them. They for whom death meant the ultimate end. The words felt heavy on their lips, in ways they had never experienced before. With Cameo's final words still ringing in her ears, Lilith gave the angel a wave and left. Hmm. Back in the night duty room, she was met with a devastating sight. Sorami-kun, ah, Oh my god. どれどれ。あ、ダメだよ、アスタロトさん。悪魔や天使はどうかわからないけど、人間にとって目は毒なの。ちゃんと取ってください。God. He was peeling potatoes. Astaroth was peeling potatoes in an apron. Good job! Lilith became the living embodiment of a smiley. To be fair, most people would have reacted similarly in her position. Sormi spotted the astonished Lilith and waved her hand in her direction, kitchen knife still in hand. Astaroth swiftly dodged the blade. Oh, okay. I'm peeling potatoes, what do you think? <laughs> As he answered Lilith, Astaros busied himself with cutting up the onions. The two had been making meat and potato soup, and he seemed really into it. Lilith seemed beyond overwhelmed. Lilith's confusion elicited a brief sigh from Sormi. The demon was a complete novice at cooking, much like she had thought. That should certainly not have come as a surprise, though. Sormi's apologetic tone made Lilith's fighting spirit bubble to the surface. <laughs> Even as an amateur cook, Lilith figured she could handle the task of neatly cutting the body of a fish. <laughs> Lilith instantly shot a sharp glare at Astaroth. Lilith put on her b borrowed apron, washed her hands, and solemnly approached the fish in question. Sarmi whispered a low, just chop it into appropriate pieces from behind. There was only one kind of chopping in Lilith's dictionary. Oh my god. Lilith made a few broad slices and noted no problems whatsoever. Next up was cutting the radish into round slices. Child's play, really. First needed to be peeled, but where would one begin to peel and how much? <laughs> Lilith, you okay? <laughs> you sure about that? You tried. 
And with that, Lilith turned to present her peeled radish to Stormy, who looked at the demon, utterly horrified. Said demon returned the gesture with a similar facial expression of her own. <laughs> Despite having volunteered to peel the radish, Lilith instead ended up with a stick the size of a pencil. Yeah. <laughs> Lilith then promptly crouched in the corner of the room to sulk and brood. <laughs> she had quite the life, to say the least. Despite all these trials and tribulations, though, the meal was ultimately finished. Lilith rose up from her own little brooding area in the corner, looking somewhat displeased. Uh, hi, hi. Oh, come on! Lilith's response came swiftly and without hesitation. Once she had left, Astaroth whispered a brief phrase to Lucifuge, who at the very moment was concealing himself in his master's shadow. You sure about that? Astaroth couldn't help but detect a hint of sadness in his trusted aide's tone. Aww. I was robbed of my primary senses. Sight, hearing, smelling. All I felt was the faint caress of the air against my skin. My pain had, almost, my had mostly faded. Another day in this state would guarantee a full recovery. Despite having plenty of things to think through, for the time being I decided to focus on recuperation. I suddenly felt someone tapping on my shoulder. Recalling the sensation I experienced a short while before, I slowly opened my eyes. As I did, the fragrant aroma of dinner filled my nostrils. Turning around, I made sure to thank Sorami, who had just woken me. Oh, hi, Raziel. Raziel, her index finger lightly tapping my shoulder, looked thoroughly displeased. Are you okay? Raziel stepped out of the closet and returned to her seat. The harsh glare she threw in my direction as she left was quite something indeed. Either way, it did not matter. It wasn't like I did anything wrong. The reasons for her seemingly foul mood must lie elsewhere. Sardine burger? Sarmi took off her apron and she wiped her forehead with sweat. Lilith returned as well with impeccable timing. Behind her stood Camiel, Eve, and Belia. Hey. Completely understandable. That was one assessment I couldn't certainly agree, agree with. Seeing how Eve made no effort to correct her, I assumed Lilith was completely right about Adam. I'm cooking, what does it look like? Astroth uttered that fact like it was the most normal thing in the world. Camille and Belio simply exchanged a confused look. Despite having lived for thousands of years, Belio still found this quite the astounding accomplishment. Oh, 
なお前あれか箸が持てないのか Camille's face turned bright red as Belial flashed a wolfish grin. Well, to be fair, I can't use it. So, no, I can't either. Skyler Tomo! Chiu, Chiu, Skyler Tomo! Somehow I doubt that. Dai, ah. Cutting him away. Each man is sending no Hakai Tenshio, Hikita, to you are a Tenshio. Ah, Tarimida! Hashi had a curry! Nanda Tarayo did it, got to Izo! Dual wielding chopsticks. A vital skill to have in, in any self respecting eating contest. So they watch up, Yogi Nawari. Um, Dakara Shinaizo, Tosenda. Fresh rivulets of sweat drip, dribbled down Camille's forehead, his cheeks flushing redder and redder from heat. Kamaeru, Bukio no no awareko to the Naito, Kamimo Sate Tarishake. Yoko Akaranga, Tabu, eat the night. So stay whatever Bukio de Wanai. You sure about that? Ma, Ika. So, let's go. I'm not sitting in the sweat. Oh, you still got it tonight? Sarmi looked unpleasantly surprised. Now that I thought about it, I did forget to bring more. With a single snap of Astaroth's fingers, the seats multiplied in numbers. I just thought Astaroth was a very good person, a very good person. Huh. Didn't know Astaroth was a chairmancer. Could she? Either way, Sormi certainly believed it, her eyes sparkling with excitement. Everyone present took their respective seats at the well laden table and placed their palms together for a brief prayer. I personally didn't give it that much thought. I offered my prayers as the occasion demanded. In this case, I prayed to God and gave thanks for the food. If one were to call me an impious person, I would not object to the slightest. Each guest offered their prayers in their own respective ways before picking up their chopsticks. <laughs> the way Camiel held his was clearly wrong. He allowed too large a distance between the individual sticks, which made it difficult for him to hold, grab hold of any given piece of food at a time. He wasn't holding them firm either. Even when he managed to pick up a bite of food, it wobbled unsteadily in the grasp of his chopsticks. He managed to hold the circular piece of radish, but pulled his arm back so fast the thing never reached his mouth. <laughs> Clearly aware of the fact his attempt was doomed to failure, Camille promptly thrust his left hand under the radish. <laughs> Once Cameo placed his radish on a plate and returned from washing his hands, Raziel offered him a pair of western utensils. Incidentally, Raziel was surprisingly skillful at handling her chopsticks. Yeah. Cameo hung his head in shame as everyone else nodded in agreement. Belial was bi Belial was busily bis Belial was busily popping radish after radish into his mouth. Belial was bi God, that is a freaking tongue twister. As Astaroth looked at him with a glare cold as eyes. Leave some radishes for me, you asshole. Well, I can't blame him. Radishes are, are very tasty. Belial's chopsticks were met by Lilith. 
Sarumi rose to her feet, but Lilith and Belial remained locked firm in one in, in place, one set pressing against the other. <laughs> Sarumi slipped behind the two demons and Karai chopped them both on the back of the head. <laughs> <laughs> Following Sarumi's fierce scolding, the two promptly quieted down. <laughs> Sarumi returned to her seat smiling. Astroth was busy admiring the very food he himself had made. Then again, it was delicious. Eve took a few elegant bites out of the food, smiling gently when our eyes met. Which was odd. It hadn't been that long since I punched her husband in the face. I exhaled a silent sigh as my mind found itself occupied by such truly nonsensical thoughts. Now was not the time to think of blood and battle. Only Raziel, sitting right next to me, wore an expression of grave seriousness. Raziel, how was it? And with that, she placed another chopstick's worth of rice into her mouth, occasionally jotting something into the notebook she kept at the side of the table. A brief glance at its contents revealed she was taking notes on flavor and types of cuisines. Did she also want to try her hand at cooking? Raziel. Raziel. Having received no answer from Raziel for a while, I decided to give her shoulders a gentle shake. <laughs> Upon hearing my question, Raziel froze up for a moment, then violently shook her head. Raziel responded with a somewhat dejected nod, then went on to lazily nibble away at her food. Noticing our exchange, Eve covered her mouth in surprise. <laughs> Eve giggled to herself, subtly implying that I would get no answer out of her today. Either way, I turned my attention to the food and endeavored to stuff my belly with as much as possible as I could swiftly regain my lost strength. Sarumi threw a wide grin and a quick, Wow, what a little glutton you are, my way. Compared to all the other people, that is, the demons and angels, in the room, she didn't seem to have eaten all that much, which I found somewhat regrettable. In any event, our dinner party progressed without incident. As the various guests had finished chatting, some recalling fond memories of the past, and Sormi was in the middle of sipping a hot cup of green tea. Astaroth abruptly spoke up. Congratulate. My initial confusion was soon overtaken by the swift realization that we did indeed topple the second stratum. Yeah. Astroth then rose to his feet. After glancing my way for a split second, Astroth went on in an observant tone. In other words, he wanted to be re to recover as soon as possible. Belial produced a wide grin. Yes. I looked the two demon lords in the eye, burning with purpose. Astral stepped closer, cupping my chin in his fingers. Behind us, Sormi was freaking out for some reason. Oh my god, I can sense the yaoi! <laughs> Uh, you might want to rephrase that. He then left the room, his devilish smile never once fading. Oh my god, calm down. The kind who's addicted to yaoi. <laughs> Belial, you're not helping. Astroth's origins could indeed be traced back to the goddess Astert. Or, if one were to go even farther back, the Mesopotamian goddess Ishtar. Which could explain why Astaroth was occasionally depicted as a female demon. 
本当に掴みどころがありませんわね。えー、she's Eve gave her a warm smile and stepped outside. As for Camiel, だから、お前の持ち方がおかしいんだって。こうだ、こう。それだと力が入らん。ああ、もう不器用なやっちゃな、お前は。もう先はレスプーンでいいじゃない。皆が箸を使っているだけで、一人先はレスプーンというのは
無理があるいやうん分かってる分かってるのよ Lilith's mood darkened. There was no way to console her. Sora, Berial must also go and say, I sat to you, I sat to you, I sat to you, I sat to you. Belial stood up with a grin and gave us a quick wave. Sora, Tendo, Setsna. I sat to you, 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 I sat to you. Belio left, leaving the room to its usual four residents. At least that's what I would have thought had Lil not gotten up and yawned with her arms outstretched. というわけで私は風呂に入って寝倒すのであと Please don't show that. Might want to word yourself a little bit better there, Sormi. Uh... Okay. Giggling between themselves, Lilith and Sormi took off towards the bathroom. Uh, Raziel spoke up, almost like she had just realized something. <laughs> Raziel fidgeted about, seemingly overconscious of my presence. It didn't seem like too big of a deal, so I proceeded to sip away the tea Sormi had prepared. I felt the lukewarm liquid sluggishly crawl its way down to my, into my stomach. My wounds had all but healed, most likely due to the energy I gained from consuming such a large quantity of food. By the time I had faced Bilio in two days, I would be able to push myself to the very limit. Kizu? Raziel ran her fingers along my nape, a look of visible concern in her eyes. Ah. She gave me a curious look. Without being aware of it, I let a faint yet bitter smile creep onto my lips, alarming Raziel. Noticing Raziel's distress, I decided to make a little confession of my own. So you funny. Tsukurareta. Tsukurareta? Wakuranoi. Watashiniwa. Raziel voiced her confusion loud and clear. The details of my birth were complicated and not particularly pleasant. Never, nonetheless, I had no intention whatsoever to paint myself as a victim. If anything, I was the aggressor in that world, the worst possible kind. After all, I... I turned my back on the very world that birthed me, raising it to the ground. The rapid development of the life sciences eliminated the need for parents in order to give birth to a human being. The warmth of a mother's womb was no longer needed, and even fatal and fetal memory existed. This technology served those who, despite wanting children, couldn't give birth to one due to certain circumstances. Whether or not such a practice would be considered ethical varied from people to people. However, I was different. The reasons behind my birth were vile and repulsive. If one were to ask a hundred people, all of them would no doubt agree on that front. 
If Razia learned of that, she would no doubt say that God would never allow such a thing. In my world, there existed no God who could forgive anything. However, I decided to hold my tongue and not say a single word. On the other hand, she was an angel, with senses far more keen than that of an everyday person. Razia placed a hand on my cheek, a hint of sorrow lingering in her tone. Painful? I didn't feel that way. Yet for some reason I found revealing this information to Raziel tremendously unpleasant. Dread and shame would be insufficient to describe the feeling that assailed me as I thought of my wretchedness being exposed to an angel who had transcended humanity and lived her life in purity. As such, I was glad that she pried no further and decided not to share that information with her Lilith or Sormi. My past was unremarkable in every sense of the word, lacking even a shred of value that would prompt a historian to record it. I was created without a name and was fated to disappear in a similar fashion. So why did I cling so desperately to the name she had given me? It truly was a mystery to me. I simply did not wish to lose my name. I cared little for my five senses, nor did I crave omnipotent power. But the name Tendao Setsuna was one thing I refused to part with. Calm and collected in every situation, being able to face pain, despair, and anguish head on without batting an eye, unfazed by the reality of returning nothingness upon death. Raziel shook her head. My expression must not have been a pretty sight. After a few moments of intently gazing into my eyes, Raziel finally spoke up in a quiet tone. Following a few brief moments of contemplation, I presented her with an answer that reflected the reality of my situation the best. No. The taste of a meal, be it good or bad, or the personal preferences of the dinner had no impact whatsoever on its nutritional value. As long as one was to consume the necessary amount of nutrients, that would be enough. Truth be told, I wondered if I even needed that much. If I could supply myself with the necessary amount of calories, the nanomachines in my bloodstream can synthesize, synthesize nutrients for me. Just wait a Raziel rushed out of the room. However, she didn't go very far, as I could hear her whispering just outside the door. As I peeked outside the door to check up on Raziel, she abruptly hit something behind herself. Something that could have been a book. Sorry. Raziel glared back at me, unable to hide how flustered she was. I must have inconvenienced her somehow. Sormi barged out from the bathroom. Lilith followed behind her with heavy footsteps, looking thoroughly dejected. Why? Raziel and I blinked at her in surprise. Sormi beamed from ear to ear as she tapped Lilith on the shoulder. Okay. Lilith was gently patting her own chest with a morose expression. Frankly, I had no idea what she was doing. However, the warning sirens in my mind were blaring loud, warning me not to say a thing if I valued my life. As such, I decided to quietly retreat out of sight. Raziel disappeared into the bathroom with the silent steps as Lilith and Sormi practically stared a hole in her back. Oh my god. Really? Really? Oh my, oh my god. Lilith, just shut up. Please. 
百分は一見にしかすかサラミ行くわよ。You fucking perverts! あいあいまーむ The two girls galloped off towards the bathroom with their respective silly walks. I decided not to get involved instead of opting to make their beds. Sorry, <laughs> Bongo! <laughs> what? I had no idea what the world's most powerful hydrogen bomb developed by the Soviet Union had to do with their conversation. On the other hand, I almost felt like I didn't want to know. I think it's better that you don't know, bro. Honestly. <laughs> That night, Sora, me, and Lilith went to bed holding hands, both of them looking positively sullen. Afterwards, I took a light shower to rid myself of the day's grime. My wounds had neatly closed up, so I promptly peeled off the scabs I had still, still had left. They had all served their purpose and were on the verge of falling off, and discarded them in the trash can. Although I did not require sleep, I still cooped myself up in the closet to completely finish my recovery process. My vision had cleared, and so did my thoughts. But I would not dream, nor would I close my eyes, and I certainly did not fear the long night. I simply sat in place, replaying the day's events in my mind. I would topple the second stratum and fought Kuro Miyako, Abdiel's words, the clear hostility I felt towards Adam, and the reason why I was here, my as of yet unknown raison d'etre. I glanced outside the window and beheld the makeshift sky, with all its stars, more or less, in the correct position thanks to Raziel. I thought them beautiful. Knowing they were fake, I still marveled at their beauty. The realization came just as quick. The reason I had yet to find my raison there was because I myself was a fake human being. Even if I did not sleep, I still closed my eyes from time to time to recall days gone by. <laughs> Tears trickled down my mother's cheeks. I myself couldn't grasp her reasons, but whatever tormented her, it must have been unbearable. Please don't cry. I let the words seep through my lips. My mother, still teary eyed, simply shook her head and whispered into my ear. Her words were blessing and curse mar married into one. They made me yield to temptation, to fear, and broke my heart. That was enough. I decided to stop. Shouldering that curse, those feelings, and even love, as well as the lives of 10 billion people, I continued to live, an imposter in human form. I turned around and saw Lilith, Raziel, and Sormi all resting peacefully under their blankets. Even angels and demons required sleep. Hmm? I suddenly felt myself at ease. My hands no longer trembled. Lilith relied on me. Sormi had faith in me. As for, Razie as for Raziel, well, at the very least, she considered me an ally. If one's gaze lingered too long in the past, he risked letting the future slip by. I needed to keep my eyes on my feet constantly to make sure I did not stray from the dark road I walked so that I could find the right path. For the time being, that would be enough. I had the feeling that a, sli so a sliver of light had ever so slightly illuminated that dark path of mine. And not just that, I felt a presence lighter than air in my right arm. We spend the night. Okay, that's pretty much where I'm gonna end it actually. <sighs> All right. We'll save there from now on. We'll work our way down. Huh. This is a good episode. I even got to see Astaroth in a freaking apron. Not sure I should feel about that. Kind of, kind of hilarious, really. And I'm pretty sure Sormi had her Yaoi fanfics freaking going on in her head right now. So that's pretty much where I'm going to end it. So thank you guys so much for watching. And I can't wait to get on to the next recording. So I will see you guys in the next video.